and they're about to build a bias in Emma and Yisrael, we always say, it's called the Mikdash Ma'at, it's called a bias, it's called a, 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 a house, it's a place where the Shekhinah is going to come in. And everybody knows, the Gemara says, that when a, 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 a house is destroyed, Mizbeach, Baicha, Shekhinah himself cries, and construction began on this house. This beautiful bias, Yisrael, and Yisrael, and Sheva. And, and the, the, the construction began, and with this tragic story, this beautiful bias that was going to be built is now broken, and Hashem is crying with us. That's an Obama for us. I got to see Yisrael and Yisheva together as a Chassam Mikhail the last night, and they, that they were Nifter, and I can tell you that they were so happy, and I can tell you, they really wanted to live. Looking forward to a beautiful, wedding of Bart. They were looking forward to uh, spending a beautiful life together. They were looking forward for growing and having children. And and and, and this is, is, is extremely painful. Another thought hit me today in the morning when I woke up. And it's something that I said a little bit earlier that the way we know how to deal with this tragedy, the way we know how to move on from this, is by watching Yisrael. How Yisrael dealt with the tragedy of losing his brother, our brother Ari. Um, everything we do, everything we, every step we take, is how we saw Yisrael react to this story. On the night of Ari's Shleishem, it was a very, very painful night. <laughs> very new to us. We didn't know how to deal with death. We didn't know how to deal with missing a family member. We didn't know what to do with ourselves. And we got together for our relation. It was very, very interesting. We were all, you know, dear. And you saw I got up to speak and I'm, I wrote down his words. This is what he said. My our relation. He said, a very strange thought struck me today. We are, this is verbatim, these are his words. This is Yisrael's husband on himself. He said, a very strange thought struck me today. We are all here for Ari. We all got haircuts. Shaved, neatened up. We're in our suits, ties, and Shabbos clothing. Almost like a chasana, but the chasana isn't here. Chasana isn't here. That's how he, that's how he understood our isolation. And we're here, we're all dressed, we're shaved, we're ready, but the chasana isn't here. It's still Ari's chasana. What's a chasana? A chasana is when your family takes you and brings you to the next point. You say, we've done what we can for you, we were there for you. You're taking the next step into the next part of your life. You're going to grow, you're going to achieve. We brought Ari here, we loved him, we did what we could for him. Now Ari is taking the next step. He's taking the plunge. He's going up to Shemayim. He's being with the Rabbeinu Shalalam. We can't interact with him anymore. But we have to send him packages. We send him our love with our mitzvahs. It will happen so soon that the time will come that Hashem will say, I am coming home to you. We're all going to be back into line with Ari once again. That was, that was Yisrael's thought and how he, how he, how he understood our religion. And how, how, how crazy it is, we're standing here in the night of Yisrael's heart and the chassan isn't here, Kyle isn't here. It's mind blowing. But Yisrael told us, Yisrael gave us chizik, and Yisrael said, the time will come that we'll rejoice, we'll reconnect uh, with them, <laughs> we'll dance, and the will come. But Yisrael told us another message. Yisrael said, what we're going to do for you, Ari. We're going to send you our love and our mitzvahs. We're going to send you packages. Yisrael was very touched by that, that the only thing we could do for a, a, a neshama, once a neshama goes upstairs in Shemayim, is to send them packages. I'm going to say what, 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 what our Rav said and what Yisrael used to repeat, that when he was a bacher in Panavish in Eretz Yisrael, in those days, it was very, very hard. Once you went to Eretz Yisrael, you were there. You didn't come back and forth. Phone calls were very, very hard. The most 
you got you got a package once in a while. Outside the the, the, the uh, dining room, there was a box over there, a bin or whatever it was, and people would go back to look and to see if they got a package from home in America, wherever it was. If you walked by and you saw a package there from home, it changed your life. It made you feel so happy and loved and warm and cared for. You would open it up. You would you examine it. You would see what it's in there. It, 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 was, it, it, it was unbelievable what it did for you. The biggest simple. The biggest simple. And if you walked by, there was no package for you there. So you just went on your, your day, and that was it. And Shemayim, every single day, the Neshamas go by, and they look in the box to see if this package is there for them. Imagine the Simcha. <laughs> they see that the family, or the people that they left, they, they left behind, they love them, think about them, care about them, and send them packages. Imagine the Simcha. They'll open it up, they'll look at it, and they'll see <coughs> every single thing that we do, whether big or small, anything you do, is a schos for their neshama. It will bring them, that will bring them untold simcha, and in turn, that will bring our family simcha, and it will, it will be a healing for us. Thank you. Amen. Amen.